Hi, my name is Ranger Tessa, and I work at Bonneville Dam in the Columbia River Gorge. Today we're going to learn about the amazing salmon in the Columbia River that have been swimming here for thousands of years, returning home to spawn every year. You might be learning about salmon in your school, and you may have some big questions like, what does a salmon's life cycle look like? Or how can a salmon survive in different habitats, from freshwater to saltwater? How did the fish get to Columbia River, and where are they going? We're going to learn the answers to some of these very important questions. The first question we might ask ourselves is, what kind of salmon live in the Pacific Northwest? What kinds might be living in the Columbia River? There are five different types of Pacific Northwest salmon. All five types of Pacific Northwest salmon start their life cycles in a river. The five types of fish we have here on the Columbia River are the pink, silver, king, sockeye, and chum. We remember these by using our fingers. Thumb is for chum. Pointer is sockeye, or poke you in the eye. King is the biggest finger and the king of the hand. Silver is your ring finger. And pink is for pinky. All these fish look a little different and act a little different, but have the same life cycle. All types of salmon start their life cycle as an egg in a red, usually in a tributary or a freshwater stream that feeds into a larger body of water. Reds are like underwater nests for salmon. They can have up to 5,000 eggs. They stay in this phase for about 60 days as they start to develop eyeballs and then eventually they hatch. Next, the eggs hatch into the alvin phase. They're still in that freshwater stream or tributary where they were an egg, but they take that egg sac with them as they grow, kind of like a sack lunch that you might bring to school. They munch on this while their digestive system is still developing, and they stay in this phase for approximately 30 days. As the alvin grow, their bellies shrink. This is known as buttoning up and eventually they're ready to move to a bigger body of water, like a river, in order to find larger sources of food. As they grow into their new phase, the salmon are known as fry and they develop spots on their sides to camouflage in this new environment. But what happens when they get to Bonneville Dam? Here at Bonneville, we have engineered several paths salmon can take to navigate past the dam and towards the ocean. From April through August, we push water through our spillway to route young salmon through this method of transit. At Bonneville, we have additional routes if the salmon don't make it past the spillway, called the Juvenile Fish Bypass System and the Corner Collector both of which are just fancy names for a fish water slide. But how do the salmon get past our powerhouses? Although our turbines may look a little scary, salmon can even go past the turbines that help us generate electricity. Once the salmon get past the dam, they enter a new habitat called an estuary, where the freshwater meets the saltwater of the sea. They transform into smolt and go through a process called smoltification that allows their bodies to breathe this new salt water. Now our salmon are adults and they're ready for the ocean. They have a very exciting life in the ocean. They spend two to five years here dodging predators, fishermen, and pollution. When they're not dodging predators and pollution, they eat as much as they can. Salmon eat plankton, krill, and even squid. Some salmon can reach up to 40 pounds. After two to five years in the ocean, salmon leave in order to spawn or produce eggs. They travel back up the river, like the Columbia River, to find the habitat or tributary where they were born and make their own red. On their journey back home to spawn, they have to travel up 60 feet around Bonneville Dam. Here at Bonneville, we've engineered four fish ladders to help salmon back to their birthplace. Salmon use their sense of smell and attraction to running water to travel up these fish ladders. The ladders include places for the salmon to rest on their journey. Bonneville Dam partners with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to count almost every single salmon that comes through our fish ladders. These numbers help us understand how many salmon return each year and set fishing limits. Do you think you'd like to be a fish counter? 
After successfully climbing these fish ladders, the salmon journey isn't over yet. Salmon find the exact freshwater stream or tributary where they were born to spawn or produce eggs to start the life cycle all over again. Female salmon dig a red to lay their 5,000 eggs and male salmon fertilize the 5,000 eggs in the red. Unfortunately, only 5 out of the 5,000 eggs in the red complete this once in a lifetime journey to successfully spawn. At every stage in a salmon's life, something is trying to eat them, as salmon are an important source of food for many creatures, including bears, whales, birds, sea lions, and people. There are many human factors that can hurt salmon, including overfishing, pollution, climate change, raising river temperatures, and including dams. Dams are a challenge for fish on their journey, but dams like Bonneville are continuing to search for ways to make these pathways better for salmon. At the end of the salmon's journey upstream, after they spawn and lay their eggs, a salmon will die. However, this is not the end of the ways that a salmon can help our environment. Salmon bring excellent nutrients with them all the way back from the ocean into our rivers and forests. Their bodies are a source of food for other fish, birds, and mammals. A bear might eat a salmon and then return to the woods. What do bears do in the woods? They poop! The creatures that eat these salmon bring important nutrients back into the woods with them to help make our plants and trees healthy. This is why salmon are considered a keystone species. At every stage of their life, they are an important source of food for other creatures. We are interconnected with them. They help us, and we can help them. So how can we help all the salmon? We can make important choices that help make a positive impact on our environment. Even small habits like turning off the lights, recycling, cleaning up trash, not using too much water, and spending time learning about and enjoying nature help make the world a greener and cleaner place. The other way that you can help salmon is by doing what you're doing right now. Learning about salmon's life cycle and natural environment is an important way that you can become an expert in helping salmon. Some schools even choose to visit the Bonneville Dam on a field trip or raise salmon in their classroom that they can later release in the river. In order to protect future generations of salmon, salmon need future generations of students like you to continue to learn about and help protect them on their long and challenging journey home.